shoulders and the knees are maybe a little bit wider than the hips. So here, you're starting the motion with the out-breath. So let's go ahead and breathe in first and just neutralize, bring that breath to the base of the pelvic floor. Just really bring that breath back there. And then as you begin the out-breath, you begin to draw from the base of the spine, draw in and up, like that's the movement that the diaphragm does when you exhale, right? So you're just rounding, rounding, both hands are down, I'm just demonstrating rounding. Rounding as much as you can, really go into a deep flexion as it's available for you here. Maybe even coming into fingertips, that's well, just fine. And then you complete as you went in from the base of the spine, you bring the breath back in. Allowing the whole spine to receive that prana, that life force through your breath. And then again, beginning at the base, rounding up, emptying out the breath, going up and in, emptying, 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 emptying some more. Again, if you want to exaggerate the movement a little further here. And then welcoming that next breath in at the very base, and then dropping the belly, opening up the collarbones, lengthening out through the crown of the head. So you can continue in this way. And those of you who wish to do this a little bit differently from Utkatasana, please join me through downward facing dog. You don't have to go into the full pose. Just walk your hands in. Bend your knees as much as it's needed. It's just a little transition. You find yourself in Utkatasana with the hands at the thighs. Okay, so then here, just settle into that. Really breathing into the hips, the face, the pelvic floor. And you can stay on the hands and knees if that feels really good to you, yeah? And so what you're looking to do here is replicate the same movement. So you are amping out the breath from the base, rounding up, rounding up, rounding up. If you want to exaggerate the movement even more, press into the calves so they can really fill up through the back body. And then inhale, bring the hands back to the thigh and let the head be the last thing to come up, opening up the collarbones, lengthening out through the back of the neck. And again, exhale, rounding up, rounding up. So this is massaging the spine. You really do need this practice daily, yeah? Even if it's just five minutes, to make our spine a little bit more supple to bring circulation back to each vertebrae. And then as you're ready, come to standing Tadasana. Those of you kneeling, do that as well for me. And then here in Tadasana, just make sure that your feet are directly below the hips. The palms are open, the shoulders are broad. There's a lift through the crown of the head while you continue to root down. And you're really rooting down through the, if you can locate the fronts of your heels, that's when you want to root the most. The calcaneum bone, the ankle bone is very strong. If you go to the front of the heel, then you're stacked up in a lovely way to free you up more. And then from here, the thighs engage. The shoulders broad, the body, that's where we're going next. We're going to send those shoulders back to where they belong, yeah? And then there's a, there's a toning of the pelvic floor and there's a lift through the abdominal wall. So there's a lot going on here. We could go on and on and on with refinements, but just these basic things. Remembering to go more towards the front of the calcaneus, the front of the heels, keeping the toes soft. Lifting up through the thighs and then engaging up, up through the abdomen and broadening the shoulders through the back of the neck nice and long. And this could be a meditative pose. And you can continue with your breath work just here, provided you have more time. 